Well, good evening and God bless you. We are so glad to be back with you here in the house of the Lord today. Thank you for tuning in wherever you are. Those of you on Facebook and those of you on YouTube, we are just elated and ecstatic to invite you to worship with us here at Rivers of Living Water Ministries International. On behalf of our senior leaders, Apostle Rod and Prophetess Selena Stevenson, we say God bless you and welcome once again. We want to give you just a few uh, in brief instructions on how you can give to the ministry tonight. You know, the word of the Lord promises that God gives to givers. I'm going to say that again. God gives to givers and he's going to increase you as you are continuing to be generous in him. His promise is, is that he will give you generosity so that you can continue to be generous on every occasion. That's second Corinthians nine and twenty one. And so we have several ways that you can give to the ministry tonight. First, you can text your gift. It's very easy. Text the word give and include a dollar amount. The number to text is two, three, one. 2212160 again 2312212160 just text the word give and be sure to include a dollar amount you may also give by using cash app at dollar sign r o l w muskegon again that is dollar sign r o l w muskegon you can also give by visiting our website at rolwmuskegon.com. One more time, that's rolwmuskegon.com. 
muskegon.com. You may finally give by a way of check or money order made payable to R-O-L-W. The mailing address is 1550 East Lakedon Avenue, Muskegon, Michigan, 49442. That again is R-O-L-W, 1550 East Lakedon Avenue, Muskegon, Michigan. Saints, we say thank you. God bless you. We want to connect and join in with our worship team. We want to lend our strength and just we want to create a concert of worship unto the Lord. So prepare your hearts as we go higher in the Lord tonight. After our worship team comes, you're going to hear a powerful, powerful lesson in the word of the Lord tonight. God bless you. God of Jacob, great I am, King of angels, Son of man, the voice of many waters, the song of heaven strong, louder than the thunder, make your glory known. Oh, speak to oh, it. Wow. 
tonight to this place of praise and worship and Bible study, this time of roaring. Amen. Um, I'm so grateful for tonight. I'm excited about the message. My name is Minister Marla McCrary, and I just want to also um, wish 2023 blessings upon you and your household. We're in a, a new year, so it's a first um, time of sharing for um, 2023. And I pray that your 2023 is um, phenomenal. I pray that the blessing of the Lord visits you and make you rich and ask no sorrow. I pray these things um, that you um, have some newness. We've declared in these parts around here that 2023 is the year of reformation. Amen. Judging some things and that word reformation. Uh, one of the de definitions that really stood out to me was that reformers, they kind of gaze and assess a, a situation. 
and they think about, they analyze and take into perspective how they can make a situation better, how they can bring change, correction, and judge some things that have been out of order and out of alignment. So you need to come and hear the word of the Lord that's coming forth. There are some strategies the Lord has given us, and so we want to reform and shake some stuff up in the culture and our families and the territory and in the region. So I decree that reform a spirit upon you in your 2023. And so we are rivers of living water, like I said. Also, um, I want to honor our spiritual leaders, Apostle Rod and Prophetess Selena Stevenson. They would love the opportunity to meet you and serve you. Um, so just come on out on Sunday morning. We have an awesome sanctuary. We have an awesome body, an awesome family um, in this household of faith called Rivers. Amen. And so um, I also want to acknowledge the team I serve with. Um, also, giving respect and honor to my husband, one of the greatest gifts um, God has given me. And so I just bless the Lord so much for him. And so before we move forward, um, we're going to invite the Holy Spirit to help us build this message tonight um, relative to talking about building and setting order. Um, amen. And so we'll do that. We'll just have him go before us so he can help us lay a foundation brick by brick, wall by wall. Amen. And so, Holy Spirit, we thank you that. You are helping us to build a house, a tabernacle. We thank you for the order that is needed and necessary in our personal lives, in our relationships, in our finances. We thank you that you're causing us to get some things in order and to reform what's out of alignment, that you're going to perfect what concerns us. You're going to make crooked places straight. We're going to um, partner together with you so that we can be doers of the word, make application, Lord. Root up some things, Father God, build on a more strong foundation. We decree that this is the season for change and reformation. And so we're so grateful. We invite you into every room, every pile, every pile that we have, everything that we have put in the basement, everything, Father God, that we have hid away in storage that needs to come out, every place, oh God. We decree that you come in and live and make your abode and come in and dwell in us in a mighty and in a fresh way in Jesus' name. And so um, before we get started tonight, um, I just want to share a couple of dreams I had relative to getting to this message. And um, I just love, um, like Apostle said, in this season, we are endeavoring to um, grow in our interpretation. And so I visited a few dream journals and books I have and some teachings from Apostle John Eckhart relative to dreams. And so it was fascinating because the Lord was saying so much in these dreams. And so the, they were very similar. And they were back to back. And I remembered them. And of course, I have a journal that I write them down, but I do I did remember. And so in the first dream, I was going to visit um, my cousin Bridget. She lives in California. Um, and so I was um, at my house knowing I needed to get to the airport. I'm at home, but I had all this nervous focus because I realized I was running late. And I knew that um, I even saw the airplane taking off. And I'm thinking, man, I'm going to miss this flight, this time of visitation. So um, as I actually do get to the airport, then a thought comes to me, oh, wow, does Bridget even know I'm coming? And I thought, that's just so crazy because, you know, you don't go out of town unless you know what hotel you're going to stay with. You don't go out of town unless you know what rental car you might need, how much it costs. Amen. The word of the Lord says, count up the cost to see if you can even finish building. Amen. But I said, oh, wow, this is so strange because that's not my MO relative to going out of town. Right. And um, you would have you would know who would be picking you up. So I just thought this is so strange. You know, um, no preparation. And so um, the second dream was very similar. And in the second dream, um, I also was going to visit a, an uncle of mine. And I was actually en route going down the street in the car. But I had to detour and go back home because I realized I didn't have my luggage. Now, like I said, in the natural, I knew that this was, like I said, not my MO. Because when I go out of town, I write a list of what outfits I'm going to wear, what shoes, what belt, what accessory. I think about, oh, do we have um, hand sanitizer, lotion, Kleenex? Do we have gum in the, my purse or in the car? So I don't travel like that in the natural. And so I was like, what's all of this about having to go back home, not being prepared? And so what really kind of cinched it for me, the message um, I saw on Sister Coleman's page, she posted a message and it depicted the, the state of two houses. <laughs> oh, wow. And so it had an illustration on one side. You got this person 
um, managing the affairs of their house. He's outside in the yard, a beautiful um, manicured lawn and fresh and greenery and uh, just awesome pictorial of this person managing the affairs of the household in which they live. And so on the other side, you saw the, another individual sitting on their porch just like sleep. You know, could, could care less, ain't putting their hand to the plot, not doing anything. So I thought, okay, God, you're talking about getting our houses in order. Amen. So whatever level that's about, because that mean, means, that phrase means so much, and we're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to encourage one another to get our, all of our houses in order. And I know we can't afford to be um, talking about somebody else's household and not have our own um, household taken care of. We can't take about, talk about having a speck removed without our own eye and, and a beam and all those kind of things like the word talks about. But we got to sweep around our own door. Amen. I think that's an old traditional Baptist song. And so um, it's a great time and it's a great season to put things in order. Hallelujah. I said it's a great time and a great season because we know we're in a new year. We're in a new month. Hallelujah. We're in a new season. And so Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 through 3. Hallelujah says to everything. There is a season to everything. There's a season. Um to walk up rightly before the Lord, to walk in holiness before you get married. There's a season for every, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Amen. And so actually I want to um, read the, um, more of that entirety of that particular scripture. Okay, Ecclesiastes 3. So there's a time to be born, there's a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up, that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away every stone and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, a time to refrain. For every t There's a time for every season, everything under the heavens, under the sun. So we get to drift of that. You can continue reading that. So like I said, this is a perfect season and a perfect time to begin to establish some order in our day-to-day -day lives. Amen. And so when we talk about setting our houses in order, we have to um, acknowledge what the Bible calls, uh, what, what theologians call, I should say, the law first mentions. And so the first time that phrase, I believe, that's in the Bible is found in 2 Kings 20, verses 1 and 2. And so I'm going to read that. Let's see. It says, in those days, Hezekiah, sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Ar Ar Amaz, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thine, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. And so it says, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he prayed to the Lord. And he began to go on his dissertation. But Lord, I walked right before you. I tried to serve you faithfully and all this, that, and the other. And so what happens is the Lord ends, does extend and add to his life. And so the moral of the story is that Hezekiah, there's a few things we can grab from that, that depiction of that. Hezekiah put God first. And God is a God of order. And so there's first there's last there's there's um apostles prophets so god is a god of order and so hezekiah put first things first and he put his face to the wall and he acknowledged he humbled himself he had a contriteness and so god added to his life and so when we talk about bringing order to our life we can say that when there's order in our life then our life is added to amen and so there's a lot you can um the Holy Spirit can breathe upon you what you need to take out and derive from this particular occurrence. But the man of God, he prayed, he fasted, he got back in the alignment, he humbled himself, he had a broken and a contrite heart, and God did not refuse him, God added. So when we have things in order, whether it's our prayer life, whether it's our eating habits, whether it's how we manage this or that or the other, when we manage those things, when we have the order of God, then there's an adding to our life. Amen. And sometimes it could be actually the number of days on the earth as we can take from Hezekiah. So first and foremost, when, it talk, when we talk about setting our house in order, it talks about what house are you going to live in for eternity? That's the best or the most important decision that we're going to ever make. 
what house are you, what room are you going to live in in eternity? Because you're going to live forever. So setting your house in order, you have to make sure that Jesus is your Savior and your Lord. So setting our house in order, that's where, that's the beginning place of setting our houses in order. Amen. And so when God comes and stands and knocks at the door of your house and your heart, we got to let him in. Set him in his rightful place, his rightful position. Amen. And so I just want to talk about a couple um, definitions before we move forward relative to the word of house, because house can mean a plethora of things. And it's just really intriguing. I really wish I had more time to just dig into this message. But that's why we're having a time of study. I give a few nuggets. The Holy Spirit brings the water and the increase. And so the word of the Lord of house can mean, yes, it's our residence is where we live. It's our address. It's our household. The household of faith is also inclusive of that word house. But when it comes to this teaching, even I found that house can mean your will. You know, house can mean your will, the decisions. Are you willful? Are you open? Are you building with a pliable and a teachable heart? And so house relative to this teaching just simply means the manner in which you live your life day to day. What kind of house are you living in in the house that you live in? How do you manage your affairs in the house that you are living in every day? Amen. So we need to go back to Prophet Ashley's message, taking some reflection about uh, what does the house look like that I live in? What is the reflection that I see in the mirror when I go in the bathroom? Is there holiness? Is there purification? What kind of house? What's the state of my house? How do I go about my day-to-day affairs? Amen. Is there disarray? Hallelujah. Are there piles? There's a clutter. It's time to set a house in order. There's a time and a purpose to set things in order. Hallelujah. And so if there's a lot of clutter and disarray and that's your norm, um, and that's okay because we're here to encourage one another to get things in order. Hallelujah. And I want to talk about a few benefits of uh, putting our house in order or setting it. And when you have your house in order, it's something about you feel accomplished. And there's a, a level of peace in your home. And it's a stress-free environment because you ain't got to look for this or look for that when there is order. And so I want us to understand when we're talking about that um, Chinese Americans or c- Chinese individuals, they practice what's called the art of feng shui. And I don't... um. um Con, um, condone it or I'm not um, advertising that we as believers should um, adapt but it's some insight we can get from that and so really the art of feng shui is just strategically arranging items in a room or in a home to create a sense of order a sense of flow balance harmony and things of that nature and so they kind of tapped into some revelation and I want us to understand before we go any further tonight I might give a natural illustration But it has spiritual significance. We can flip it. We have a spiritual house. We have a natural house. We have a physical house. We have a relationship house. We have a mindset house. So when I say set your house in order, it's about you and the Holy Spirit, about what needs to be arranged and reformed in your life. Amen. And so God spoke to us a lot of times in parables. He would take a natural situation and he would help us to understand what it means in the spirit. And so that reference is 1 Corinthians 15 and 46, first natural then spiritual first there was a first there was a natural Adam and then there was a spiritual Adam amen there's a there's a natural husband and then you have your spiritual husband so there's a natural thing that takes place so we can flip it relative to what we are talking about and what they kind of merge sometimes so they can kind of coincide one with another so setting our house in order and the benefit of it like I said, it's, it'll be provide a peaceful place, a harmony. You'll want to be at home where you don't have all this stuff, all these clothes you got to um, walk through. You won't be embarrassed if somebody pops up to visit you. Amen. And that can apply naturally or spiritually. Amen. And so when there's a peaceful environment of praise and worship, um, not murmuring, not complaining, hallelujah, obedient to the Lord, that brings about a fragrance to the nostrils of God. And so even Jesus said, me and the Father will come and make our abode in that kind of environment. And so we become attracted to him. He wants to come and live and dwell, but can he get through the door? Or are we stubborn? Are we obstinate? Is he welcome? You know, are we murmuring and complaining? Can he sit at the table? Can we um, sit at his feet? You know, when he comes to visit, are we going to be Martha? Are we going to be too busy 
and our house of the called life that we don't even prepare a table for him to to eat from like he does for us. It's time to set ourselves in order, whatever that means for you, because it means something different for all of us. Amen. And so we want the presence of the Lord to come and, and make his dwelling and abode with us. Amen. And so we want Jesus um, to come and tabernacle with us. Amen. And so that obedience, that fragrance, um, we don't want things to smell. You know, the garbage needs to be the garbage needs to be taken out. The natural garbage, the mental garbage. Hallelujah. And so we need to just um, take um, stock and see who have we allowed to come and sit on our couch. What demonic intruder or resident has an occupant has been living in our house? It's time to judge it, right? Going back to this year of judging and reforming. Who have you, what spirit have you allowed to come and sit and put their feet up? What demonic man have you allowed to live in your life that's sitting there and don't contribute? It's time to set our houses in order. Amen. It's time to evict the kingdom of darkness. It's time to tell them, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Get out of here. I got the title indeed. Who and what have you allowed to come in in your day to day affairs? What relationships? What conversations? Who, where are you living? What room are you in? Are you in the basement? Are you in the attic? Are you in the upper room? Where are you right now? It comes a time to set things in order. Amen. To confront some things, the disarray, the, the piles of clutter. Hallelujah. And we do that with the keys of the kingdom, Matthew 18. And so we bind some stuff. So when those enemies are there, those voices, that laziness, that procrastination, whatever it is, that hoarding, that clutter, that greed, that gluttony, whatever's been living there, you t you bind it and you loose it because that's another strategy for 2023. It's time to bind up some things. Amen. That's trying to live in your generation, live in your heart, live in your children, live in your house. It's time to set order in your house that you work and pay for and gave the price for the sacrifice, whether it was natural or spiritual. It's time to set our houses in order. And a key of the Lord gave us, he wants us to do that with some boldness and with some authority. We don't just allow the enemy to come and live in us. We go into the strong man's house and bind and take and spoil his goods. It's time to set our house in order. We have keys to the kingdom. We have keys to open up. Hallelujah. What is rightfully ours, the doors that we're supposed to walk in. We can walk into these places. Amen. Because we set our houses in order. Hallelujah. You can't even go in unless you first bind him. That is um, just such a powerful tool that the Lord has given us. And so I, I want to talk. Those are some spiritual things. I want to talk about our natural house. <laughs> OK, because it, we talked about a house as representative of what's going on in our spiritual life. So if there's a lot of clutter in your natural house, you know, and a, a lot of things going on in your emotions, you know, if you're always late, you can't find this, you can't find that. It can be telltale signs of what's occurring cause in your day-to-day -day life. Because we said that's what um, our house represents. What matter how you live in? Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to take some understanding about that, some self-reflection. So I'm going to ask some questions, you know, relative to the natural perspective. Our natural house is where we live every day. So as you look around, what needs to be done away with what doesn't serve you anymore what's taking up space and where you're living what's dusty and old and obsolete amen what clothes are in your closet that you can't even wear anymore and I was listening to a woman of God just kind of encourage us even women like when you come out of the world and you got those mini skirts and you got those um short sh tops and shorts she was like don't send them to the good goodwill don't give them to somebody else because you don't want to set that seed and sow that seed in somebody else's life. So it's time to clean out our closets, amen, if that is um, where you're living right now, amen. So just asking us some questions. What does your closet look like right now? Is it orderly? Can you find your stuff? Is stuff sitting there that somebody else could benefit from, but you just sit? it's just sitting in your house to help set somebody else's life in order that needs to go on a job interview and need some clothing. What does your garage look like, <laughs> men of God? You know, and this is not to um, poke a fun or um, be crit critiquing, but we're talking about setting some things in order because the clutter makes a difference. I remember one time in our first home, uh, my husband woke up. I think it was a Saturday. And he said the Lord said we need to deal with some of this clutter because clutter is an invitation to to the demonic. 
And so we had to get some stuff out. And it's so true because when you're at home and you got um, the shades down and it's daytime, it affects how you feel that clutter of um, the darkness that has invaded your home. There's no light. There's no refreshing. So clutter can have an effect upon um, what can be attracted into our home, what's fragrant, what wants to come and stay. So look around and see what needs where you need to touch some stuff. Amen. Like prophet says. And so um, we want to ask ourselves these questions. What's down in the basement? Can you get down in your basement? <laughs> Hallelujah. What does your car look like? You know, is it a bunch of um, McDonald's wrappers and this, that, and the other? We know that's not happening now because we're fast and we're setting our physical house in order. So it, it's all inclusive. All of this, all of this is all inclusive. You know, what does your physical house look like? I have to um, acknowledge myself. I got to put my physical house in order because I have not had, um, went to the doctor fair maybe a couple years, I, you know, just to get a physical, just to see how things are going. So I have to put my physical house in order. Amen. I need to go to the dentist. So that's not operating order or balance. So things like that, what is taking place in your life right now that you need to set in order? Amen. Because order um, is what we need for fruitfulness and even creativity. It's just something about when things are in order. You can find stuff. You feel accomplished when you finish. You feel at peace. You want to be at home. Amen. So take an observation. Take a look. Take some reflection to see what in your home needs some attention. Whether it's your natural home or your spiritual home, the home of your relationship, the home of your marriage, the home of your parenting. The house you live in at your workplace. What does your desk look like? Amen. So it's a time to set some things in order. What does your congregation look like? What fruit is being? Well, what does your ministry look like? What is the house of your ministry? Amen. Are there occupants? Are there residents living in the house that you are over, have responsibility for? It's time to set our houses in order. And when we talk about order, we have to go visit Genesis because that's where God began to establish order, right? Amen. We go back to Genesis. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter one. And it says in the beginning, hallelujah, the beginning place, the order place. So God is the God of order. He said to do all things with decency and in order. God is driven by order. And I was listening to Mike Murdoch teach that. He said God is he's hungry for order. And so we need to study order even going into 2023. And so in the beginning, God created the heavens and he created the earth. And the earth was out form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Without order, there's darkness. Amen. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And, he, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And so one thing I like about this in another translation, I think it says, if I can find it really quickly. Um, this is the Aramaic translation. And it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was chaos. And it was empty. And the King James says, and darkness on the face of the deep. The Brenton Subtigent translation says, the earth was unsightly, unfurnished, you know, unkept. And you know how that is in the natural. Like I said, merging the natural with the spiritual. When you're unkept, when your hair is all over the place, you got buttons missing, the screen door is raggedy at your house, you know, your belt, your clothes too tight, and, and you got all this lint on your clothes. Whatever the case is, when things are unsightly, it's because there's no order. There's no preparation. Going back to that dream, I was my luggage was not packed. I didn't have the right clothes for the visit of somebody else's house because my own house wasn't in order. So going back to a place of order, it says that the earth was chaotic. Whenever there's no order, it's chaos. There's anarchy and all kind of things breaking out on the left and on the right. So God is a God of order. He showed us this pattern in the word. And so it says the earth was unsightly and unfurnished until somebody saw until God set things in order. He began to hover over situations. He began to attend to some situations. He began to put order and establish what was supposed to be. And so we can go out down through that dissertation, but God sets up things in order. Day one in his house, the, the, the earth, house called earth, excuse me. I'm so excited about the message. Um, on the day one in this house called earth, God put the light in the house. 
There's got to be some light in our houses. And light natural, you got to be able to see, yes. But light spiritual, there needs to be some revelation in your house, in your life. You need to have some understanding. There needs to be some light, some awareness, some acknowledging where there is darkness so you can evict it and uproot it. Set your house in order. Amen. And so God brought some light into his, his, into the earth, into the world, into the house. You know, he separated the water. There was water in the kitchen, running water, a flow. He added dry land, and, and which can be synonymous of landscaping. And your natural house, what does it look like? Is it, are you bearing fruit? Is it veget vegetation? You know, what's the landscaping look like on, your, on how you show up? You know, are you dry? Do you need some water? Do you add water? What does your spiritual life look like? Hallelujah. And so we can just, we're doing symbolism, what we're doing between the natural and the spiritual. Amen. And so God puts stuff in order. Hallelujah. And so in order to put things in order, we have to do just like the Spirit of the Lord. And what the Spirit of the Lord did was everything has a place. And that's one way you can be organized when we talk about um, establishing and putting some things in order. And so if you got little kids, do they have a place that they know where their toys go? Are there, where their clothes are? I know a lady, I read an article, I can't remember which one, where for the week she had her kids, her little bitty ones, and they would hang up their clothes that they were going to wear for the week. You know, that everything should have a place. For your mail, there should be a place. Where you store your winter clothes, your summer clothes, where you put your keys, there should be a place for everything. That's how you establish order. And I know some people think that's, all. Oh, that's too much. And I, want, I understand you want it out so you can see it. But there needs to be some kind of semblance of order. Amen. Everything should have a place. And, you know, for your mail, your important documents, you know, your birth certificate, there should be a place for everything. And that's how you implement order. The time and season to, to be sleeping, the time and season to be celibate, the time and season to be holy and upright, the time of learning, all of that has a time and a season and an order and a management to it. Amen. Setting our houses in order. And so uh, another scripture that's really powerful to be relative to order is um, Proverbs 24, verses 3 through 4. By wisdom, a house is built. And by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. And so we understand that in the natural, we want our rooms to be filled with beautiful things and beautiful decor, aesthetics. We as women, we love that beauty. But when we talk about our spiritual house, we need to have wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord. To build up a house, your, your generation, your children, your legacy, there needs to be the fear of the Lord to build a house that will go from generation to generation. Amen. And there needs to be some understanding and some application. Amen. And light has to come on so you can see and know and discern what's out of order, how to put it in order. How do I go about doing this? What season do I do it in? That is wisdom, the knowledge. Amen. Distinguishing. Hallelujah. And so I was even reading um, the verse of the day, and it talked about the scripture that says um, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. And the um, speaker was saying that knowledge just means experience. So the earth will be filled with experiences or encounters of the Lord. And I begin to think about that word relative to wisdom and building your house, the house of your children, the house of your family. And I had a memory about when I thought about the word experience, when you're using wisdom and you experience something, you get the wisdom on how to do it better next time if you went astray. You, you are able to look at the knowledge and the instruction that you took into account and how you gained and how your life was built up by the decisions and that wisdom that you implemented. And so I thought about how he also said that when it comes to building your leadership team or your children, you need to let them know what you experience so that they don't make the same mistakes. So we don't just tell them the good stuff. We tell them the bad stuff. When you missed it, how you, where you went wrong. So they get that experience and don't have to go down that and live in that same um, house, that same measure. Amen. And I thought about a time when I was talking to my daughter. And I was telling her about how when I was young, how I was stuck on stupid and how, you know, we was boo-boo the fool. We had those knuckleheads and we had those experiences. And I told her about how I missed it. I shared my experience with her so she didn't have to. And I don't believe, I don't know if she was married at the time or not, but I felt like she needed to know, hey, I made some mistakes. 
but I implemented some wisdom. I chose to live in a different um, environment. I wanted my house to smell better, look better. And I even told her about even when I looked at pictures of my first marriage, because of my first marriage, it was premature. We weren't equally yoked, things like that. Um, and so um, I said, I'll never forget when I look back at the photo albums and I see the look upon my father's face. He was crushed because he knew it was not a t- eternal. It was not. It was not God. And so it's a time and a season to wait on God to bring that order of who he has placed in your life. Amen. And so I was letting her know this is my experience, but I don't want it to be your experience. So setting our houses in order. And we have to do that by um, even Proverbs 13 and 1. Every wise woman, every wise husband, every wise body, uh, every a household of faith builds up their house. But the foolish tears it down with their own hands with their own mouth, with their own pride, with their own laziness, with their own procrastination, with their own foolishness. And so building up a house, we have to use wisdom. We have to have some floor plans. We have to have a blueprint, which God has given us in his word. We have to submit to counsel. We have to sit in some rooms uh, and acknowledge what's out of order. We got to look at the dust and call it dust. Amen. And so in this season, we have to implement wisdom. And we can't implement wisdom unless we first talk about Proverbs, um, even 31, relative to women in our day-to-day household. And I just want to read a little bit about the Proverbs 31 woman, and we're going to pray ourselves out of here. Um, my time is winding out really quickly. But when Proverbs 31, starting at verse 10, says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband does swiftly trust does so trust in her that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. These are some powerful nuggets. She seeketh wool. Hallelujah. She works willingly. She has an awesome work ethic. She rises up while it's nighttime. So these are principles we can take from the word of God. You know, she's a woman of character, a woman of virtue. So that means she has a moral Um, resume a moral reputation hallelujah it says that you have to search for her amen and so even for young men a relative to i got one more child that's not married my baby my baby boy and so we want him to have a woman of virtue amen and so we can apply these principles in our life. We need to be a virtuous people. We need to make virtuous decisions. We need to, people need to trust us with their heart and speak well of us and rise up and call us blessed. All these things that the scripture says in Proverbs 30, when we can be a Proverbs 31 people. And so she is far above Ruby. She's valuable. Does your boss trust in you? Are you um, integral? Are you showing up on time? Do you get the job done? Do you represent in, in your landscape and how you show up? Amen. Your worth, are you valuable? Are you adding to relationships? Amen. Hallelujah. Whether it's with your ministry, your team, you serve, things of that nature. It says that she knows how to speak. She knows how to be kind. She knows how to shop. She knows how to plan. She knows, understands time management. She knows how to sacrifice. She knows how to interact with people. Amen. She knows how to invest. She knows how to care. She's integral. She has character. She builds a house of wealth. Amen. Getting our houses in order. She has no lack of gain. She knows what to do. Amen. She doesn't spend money foolishly. She does good and not evil. She speaks good and not evil. She builds up and she does not tear down because she's not a foolish woman. She's a Proverbs woman. And so I decree that upon us tonight. She knows how to work. She's productive. Hallelujah. She has common sense. She knows how to manage. Hallelujah. Managing our time. And so I just want to pray us out of here in these few minutes that I have left. And so I pray that um, in this time of reflection, Look at what needs um, your attention, whether it's natural or spiritual. Look at what's out of order, what's out of alignment. Amen. Is it your thought process? Is it what you meditate on? Is it what you what comes out of your mouth? Is it how you engage with other people? Is it your natural house? Amen. Do you need to get rid of some stuff? Hallelujah. And so, Father God, in Jesus name, we thank you for this time and season that you have given us, bestowed upon us and gifted us with. 
We thank you that you are visiting where we live. You want to come in and live with us and make your abode and come in and tabernacle with us. And so, Lord, we give you access. We open the door. As you stand and knock, we say, come in and begin to help us judge and put furniture in its rightful place. Put you in order. Put you first, God. Hallelujah. We ask you to come in and help us, Father God, in this season. Out with the old, in with the new. What doesn't fit us anymore? What serves no more purpose in our lives? How can we advance your kingdom, God? What is our representation, God, when we show up? We want to represent your kingdom with your ambassadors in the earth. And so, God, we thank you in this season, Father God, it's going to be a yoke easy. There's going to be a sweeping and a house cleaning and a binding and a loosening and a judging and some evicting of those things that do not belong languages and mindsets and heart partials father god help us to set things in order conversations we have relationships people that have been hurt forgiveness putting those practices in order going back doing our first works over help us put things in order put perspective in order father god not get stuck, Father God. Not live down in the dark place in the basement, Father God, but let there be a renovation and a restoration. Hallelujah. And a reformation, God. Give us a reformer spirit, Father God. Help us to build on a new foundation, God. Help us to live in houses that we did not build in the spirit realm, Father God. Help us to receive the wisdom of the Lord, the supernatural unction to know all things as we sit at your feet. That we're not too busy being Martha, but we are Mary sitting at your feet, building line upon line, precept upon precept, generation to generation. Father God, we want to set things in order. All things decently and in order. The time to do it in. That we don't miss opportunities or, or things that you have sent for our lives. Because, but we're not in position because there's too much stuff and too much clutter in our lives. God, we want you to come in and move furniture the way you desire it to be. That there will be a flow for creativity and productivity and fruitfulness, God. We don't want to waste time, God. Help us to set our hands to the plow. Set things in order. And so I loose this upon your people, Father God. It is a time of season that the oldest pass away. Behold, all things become new. We want to live in a different address, God. Hallelujah. Come in, Father God, and make your abode with us tonight, Father God, that we will lay, oh God, new foundation, new rugs, new pillows, that there will be beauty for ashes in our lives, the old waste place, God, the ruins being built up. God, come in and help us set your kingdom in order, set our house in order, your agenda in order in our city, in our household of faith. Father God, set there. You've already set order. Help us to get in order because you've already set the order and we just walk and get in position. And so, Father God, we thank you for this tonight. I bless your people. You crowned our year. We thank you for this new month. There's a new grace for this month. There's a grace to finish, a grace to go beyond, grace in our bloodline, in our children's lives, God, that they would know our experience, that they would know where we miss it, where we fail, that they don't have to live at that same place. And so, Father God, we thank you for what you've given us, that we can live with you eternally, that we set our house in order where we're going to live eternally, God, because it's all about Christ and nothing less. And so we thank you that we will reside with you and habitate with you and walk with you and establish your order in the earth after you come to judge the anarchy and the rebellion and the sins. Turn our hearts back to you. Turn fathers' hearts back to their children, their children's hearts back to fathers. Oh, God, let our parenting be in order. Oh, God. With young people, help them understand your order, husband, wife, child, hallelujah, marriage, holiness. We want to be a people of order. Hallelujah. And so, God, we thank you tonight for the spirit of order, for the spirit of wisdom, for the spirit of counsel, for the spirit of revelation, for humility to build and get our houses in order. And so we bless you tonight, Holy Spirit. We thank you that we're going to go home. We're going to do that check. Days from now, we're not going to make just resolutions. We're going to reform the way we do things. And so, God, we bless you. We bless your people, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. God bless you, people. See you here next time. Come here Sunday morning. There is a place set. There's a table set, and we would love to have you. God bless you.